Hi guys, Retro Trek Ralph here again. I've got another DVD and Blu-ray review, so bear with me. This is Battlestar Galactica. This is the original first series of Battlestar Galactica. Aired in 1978, was originally September, I think it was. This starred, it's a ridiculous the amount of people that this actually starred. Long Green, played at Commander Adama. Massive actor, John Collier. Colicos. He actually played a, a character in Star Trek. So there's loads of things. There's always a baddie in something. You've got the, the the newly new characters on here. You've got Apollo and Starbuck as the characters, but the Richard Hatch and Dirk Benedict. He's been in the A Team. You'll know him from eighties and stuff like that. But the box set here shows the incom it says the complete series, but. Uh, there's more to Battlestar Galactica, which you're going to find out pretty soon anyway. So, in the sleeve there, we've got three, well, six discs on, on DVD. Bonus material. These are, there's only one series they actually made of Battlestar Galactica. Which is a shame, because it was such a good series. Inside, nice little run-up of all the episodes. You can zoom in and quick snapshot of what everything on here. And the actors, as I said, the actors again, Jane Seymour, massive English actress. She even played in the Bond film, was the love interest of Apollo to start with, before she died in the in the original movie. They're absolutely these these haven't been played for a long time. These really need to get on with watching the original series. It does look a bit dated. It was from the era, the year after Star Wars came out. So if you had got any sort of sci-fi ideas, they were jumping on them left, right, so they needed some some loads of sci-fi stuff. Book Rogers came out just after this. You had Star Trek first, the first film, the motion picture came out. Loads of bonus features on here. Just actually state, is it? Yeah, creation of Battlestar Galactica, Inside Galactica, the Cylons. See, it was a it was a very kind of Greek named sort of series. You had all the the different twelve colonies of man. There was a thirteenth colony that was supposed to be out there that you didn't really know what or anything about until it developed. The Cylons were a creation of the Capricans, the, the humans on here. And you thought, okay, fine, we can figure out what this is and everything's fine. And it's very it, it, mythical, it's very, very biblical sort of the names and the, the, the way it all kind of edged out with the, the Cylons taking over their, their human rulers and killing them all off. And there was the last, last ragtag group, they called it, of, of, of humans looking for the 13th colony. Which then you figured out eventually, 13th colony is us. Which we apparently, humans, Earth, were, um, we, we left Caprica, we left all the, the 12 colonies behind to make our own, our own life. Which then, it, it puts a massive twist on, on ancient aliens, that we actually are an alien on this planet, but that's, we don't know, it's, it's a good story. But it, I, I just... Don't know. You just don't know. There's no proof either, either way. Again, on an actors on this, the guy who did the talk, the, the, there was a, an introduction on every, all, all the titles. The guy who did the voiceover on that was was Patrick McNee. He played Steed in the original Avengers. He's got one of the really good voices you could really listen to for quite a while. So, like I said, this was was absolute brilliant series at the time. Loads of big actors on there that you'll you probably know a little bit about, but definitely a good binge watch. One series, very good to get hold of. I think they'd be on any streaming services. Battlestar Galactica. Now, when I say there were only one series of Battlestar Galactica, there was definitely one series. Not long after, they made. Battlestar Galactica, 1980. Now this was set in whatever time, we don't know. It was 
I don't know, maybe set 50 years before 1980, probably set whatever time, we don't know. But the Galactica 80 was set, obviously, 1980. They found the Earth. They were also being chased by the Cylons, which are always being chased by in the original series. They found the Earth, but how could they go to Earth when we were at the 1980s stage? I mean, it made... Uh, you had a three-part episode to get into the series. The Di Galactica Discovers Earth, one, two, three. Super Scouts, part one and two. They even had a Nazi episode, a time travel. I think it was a night the Silence landed. I'm not entirely sure, but it was a bit weird. How did they get time travel when they were all on a on ships that barely could fly? But then they had the return of Starbuck, which was a good final episode to try and get something back into the series and it ultimately failed anyway the original actor of Starbuck re reprising his role again I mean, this was set like I say it was set probably 30 40 years afterwards Apollo the main character was Richard Hatch he died not the actor he's, he's not around with us now but something happened not entirely 100% certain but there were things that happened between there, there. There's a big 30-odd, whatever, 40-year gap between, maybe less, I don't know. But it kind of tried revamping itself from the begin, from a story at the end, and ultimately didn't do a full series. Nowadays, that's probably a full series for a lot of shows, but that would have been probably a quarter of a series. Well, we've got five, got ten episodes there. The usual ones at this rate were about 28 episodes, 29, 30 episodes, maybe this come out there. And they used to have a lot more. They used to either string out the series or it was a case of they had more stories they could tell us. Which was really nice. Really, really nice they could do that sort of stuff. So we have the original Battlestar Galactica. Original series. <clears throat> the attempt to do something with it, which ultimately failed. And we're left with a storyline that just ended. Fast forward to 2004. Battlestar Galactica got revamped. Now, he, he, I looked at this and thought, no, this is just wrong. You've got different actors. You've got the guy, uh, the Edward James Olmos, who played... Oh, he was in Miami Vice. He, he was in... Gan? Was it Gan that was in, in Blade Runner? Completely different actors. He's a British actor, played an American role. All different, Gaius Baltar again, all the same names, Boomer, Starbuck was being played by a woman. Now this was, all right, the, the couple of years ago when they did the read of the Doctor Who with a woman, yeah, it was an absolute nightmare and, and I wasn't, I didn't like Doctor Who being a female, fine, it's a male role, whoop de doo But this was before Starbuck was a woman and Katie Sackhoff, yeah, she's, she's pretty hot and she's been in loads of other things since, but it was a male role, but she played it so bloody well. She was absolutely brilliant in there, which made her into a complete household name for a lot of people, and for a lot of others, she was quite a um, fantasy woman, should we say. Although, out of a lot of them, they think... Oh, what's her name now? Trisha Helfer? Yeah, she was... Yeah, very pretty. But she played so many different roles. Because she was a Cylon. And that's what got me with the series. Is the Cylons were no longer human. But then you did see the mechanical Cylons by your command. And you did... It kind of twisted it. They never once look back at this and think, yeah, we've got all this history behind us. It was a complete redo of the series, which is which is pretty good that they actually attempted to do that. So, Blu-ray discs, series, season one, disc one and two. Then it's actually got the mini-series. Actually, let's go through the... I'll go show you the front of these first. Series one... She's a silent. Her eyes don't go red, but hey ho. Season two. See, Boomer was also a. All right. What a spoiler. Boomer was also a male character as well. She, he was also black as well in the original series, but he was just a pilot. He was one of the guys with Starbuck and Apollo. 
but another woman, Gracie Parks, and she she was brilliant, absolutely brilliant actor, actress. But then she turned out to be a sleeper agent for the Cylons. So you never knew that at the time. It, it's so many twists that the series did without even you, you never knew about it. Star, no, sorry, Apollo himself, who was the son of Adama, yeah, he, he's at his character arc changed so much over the series. He was best pilot in the world and this, that, other, and, and everything was great and happy, but then he, tur he, he completely turned his back on both the Galactica and, and the, being the pilot. It, it twists so much that they could have, they really did a different take on him, like they did with all the characters. Series 4 there, red dress. Got into a 3 three disc on that one. But then we have a final season. We actually have on here as well, there's a Razor episode, which I kind of thought was a separate TV movie, but it, it is. It's an, a, there's a, actually a broadcast edition and the unrated edition on this. So you don't really need the separate Blu ray. If you get in the box sets so that is on the series four at this one at least anyway and then the final season wrapped everything up they found earth and it wasn't exactly the earth that they found in this one because it was a completely different story again it's nice to have actually got a book a uh, book for this one showing all the people it's a mark well it's not a mark one original Cylon, which we actually did have around so she was the president so she was in charge of Everybody really. The Adama eventually become a, a lawyer or something. Jamie Bamba. Gaius Balto. He actually played. If you actually remember his face, he's been in. Oh, I think he was in Bridget Jones's Diary. He's a British actor. Yeah, James Callis. Callis. Yeah. No, oh, there it is. Bridget Jones. Edge of Reason. Right, number six. Caprica six. Sai, or oh, Sol Tai. See another different twist on his character as well. He was the second, second in command, the XO. And he turns out to have problems. He lost his eye, and then you find out eventually that he is a Cylon as well. Galen Terrell was basically the chief, chief O'Brien of the entire series. Again. Another Cylon. It was so many of the characters, the main characters that you just never thought were the baddies and they've been with us all the time. Dean Stockwell as well. Played a massive part in the series. It was all the way through it. Played Cavill was the number one. Because I think were there nine designs of the Cylons? I'm not I'm not 100 percent certain. There might have been 12, I don't know, but it was such a good series to watch. But it developed the, the, it, beyond what any of us could have actually have thought at the time. It just went so mi miles out of the way. The best episode is when the, the final one, where the Galactica does the final jump. Such a big tension in that, that episode. And she ends up jumping, and you see the ship, the effects on the ship, and she just... The, the whole lot is, is obviously a big massive ship and the back just goes like that. The whole superstructure of the ship just, just breaks. It will never jump again, what what, what Ty says. She will, she'll never jump again, she broke, the back's broken. Oh, it's such The effects were absolutely... There were, there were none of these... He's a, he's a straight camera and the spaceship flies around. It was all... Everything was, was kind of rocky all over the place and everything was... was Kind of that way well with mine because my camera's got a stabilization on it. But that was was kind of there was the rocky sort of it was it was in your face. It was it was really gritty and dirty and, and grimy and nothing perfect like the original series started out to be. Of course the series ended. There was a Razor film, which is series four anyway, they would include it on this. Which is great, which is whatever, but not long after that they actually did. There was a couple of things that they did. They did Caprica as a series, and I have tried 
my damnedest. I have actually tried twice to get into the series and it's kind of set before the Battlestar Galactica series, the new version, and I cannot get myself past about episode four. And I just, I need to get into it because it, it develops the Cylons, how they come about. And I just, I need to binge watch it, but I just cannot do it. And it only lasted for one series, so it's not going to be that bad to do. But, yeah, there was actually a TV movie that was trying to... Trying to, it seemed to me that they were trying to cash in a little bit. I think it was called The Plan, which isn't part of this box set. And I don't recommend buying it because it's got snippets from everything. It's the story of the, the Cylons all the way through this. And it's everything's just like a best of. So I haven't got it. I don't want it. I'm not bothered about it because it's just basically... Yeah, it's kind of like if you, if you remember Star Trek Next Generation, the Shades of Grey episode, end of series two... It's kind of like that with all the snippets from the first two series, little bits and bats all the way through it. And it does give you the full story. If you don't want to go through all four series of Battlestar Galactica, possibly five series of Battlestar Galactica, then watch that. It's a good story, but there's so much more in these. Way more in these. Last effort to get something out of the Battlestar Galactica from this generation, not the first generation, but the second generation, was Blood and Chrome. And this is a good TV movie, shall we say. I've got the extended cut here on Blu-ray. And it's it follows a young commander, well, a young Adama, who ends up being the commander Adama. He's not on there, is he? But it shows you missions before, and there was a Cylon-ish sort of... And it, it does give you a a real taste of before with the grittiness of Battlestar Galactica, not the the peace tranquility of what Caprica was and the perfect lifestyle, the technology they had. Yeah, it, it was there, but it was still, they were on the fringes, they were on the outskirts, they were, they were still struggling. But it is a good film to watch. It's a good ending to the Battlestar Galactica but I wouldn't recommend watching this before the series, because even though it is set quite a long before, quite a few years before. But, yeah, yeah I, if you want to, you can watch it before, but I would recommend definitely going through the first lot first, but I would definitely recommend, if you're going to watch this, if you're going to watch the Battlestar Galactica ones, if you, if you can't stand 70s and 80s sci-fi, Fine, don't bother, but it it does give you a massive leap between 70s and 80s, 2000s. It, it's it, your development on your 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 contrast of your characters between they're all the same names, they're all the same story, but it's so much more with the Galactica redone series. It's absolutely amazing. How they did it. There were talk a few year ago, maybe a few months ago as well, that they might possibly redo this again. Different storyline for Battlestar Galactica. I don't think it would be a good idea. It's like redoing Star Trek from the beginning. But there's not much else that they, different directions they could go for Galactica. Star Trek, yeah, you've got a fleet of ships. Galactica was the last ship, even though you had other ships following the convoy. It was just for them. They had the Pegasus, which was nice, which is where the Razor episode comes in, where Pegasus comes in. This is where... It's a mirror of the original series as well, the, the Razor episode, because it, it's... The Pegasus comes out of nowhere. She was part of a battle. She would seem to be destroyed at the beginning, but then she went, did something else and came back and then sacrificed herself for the Galactica which is also the similar sort of storyline on here with the Razor as well. So they're really mirroring what they had before. Not just the characters, but some, a lot of the stories as well. And they redid them for a, for a 20th, 21st century audience. So, if you need a binge watch, definitely. You have to get Galactica. You have to watch this. If you're any sci-fi nut, you have to watch the redo of Battlestar Galactica. If you're a purist, you have to watch these. No no question, you have to watch these, then watch that, then watch your Blood and Chrome. You have to. 
but if you don't like this, fine. Go watch something else. There's a billion different sci-fi series lately, and I really need to get into one one big one at the moment, which is The Expanse. Really have to get into that. It looks such a good series, and they've got the fifth series coming out very soon. If not, it's already out on on Amazon. So we'll see where that goes, and I'll, I'll well maybe in a few years' time I'll do a box set review of that one as well, and we'll see where it goes from that one. So anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed that. I've really enjoyed that because it's got me a lot of memories back of the original series of the the redone series, and yeah. Go out and buy them. They're out there. They're on box. They're on binge watch releases on Amazon, I think, and and Netflix. And if not, go to Amazon. Get you get a box set. Sit there with the actual discs and play them and watch them as much as you can. So anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you in another video. Bye bye for now.